Amen. All right, let's turn to the book of uh, Zechariah. We're going to have us a great time in the Lord tonight. We're going to learn a lot. Yeah, so we're in the book of Zechariah. And we're going to be in chapter number four, and we're going to learn a lot about the Lord. Amen? When you have it, uh, say amen. So Zechariah, like not Zephaniah, but Zechariah, chapter four, verse number five through ten. So I'm in Zechariah, chapter four, verse number five through ten. When you have it, say amen. And it, Zechariah 4, 5 through 10, it said, Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shall be shall become a, pl a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts have sent me unto you. Uh, for who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the uh, plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel uh, with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. Let's pray. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you will speak unto this people here tonight. God, teach us something. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge. Give us instruction, God, by your spirit, God. I, I pray a blessing over everybody here tonight. God, you'll speak to them mildly, God. I rebuke all distraction, God. I rebuke all distraction. I rebuke all idol worship, God. Let us worship the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Let us exalt the name of Jesus together. And let's clap our hands as we're seated in Jesus' name. Verse number six, I really like it. It says... Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So today I want to talk about by the spirit. I want to talk to you today and teach you some things by the spirit. Listen, I feel to tell somebody, you got to get your life together. But you don't get your life together by yourself. You get your life together by the spirit of God. The Bible tells us that our life is not our own, but we're bought with a price. That price is the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're bought by something, you must serve what bought you. You're not just a slave, you're also a son or daughter of God. But you have to understand that if you're going to be led of the Spirit of God, today, you know, from this moment forward, you're no longer making decisions by yourself. You're making decisions based on what God wants. That's the resolution you need in your heart tonight, is that I'm no longer making decisions based on what I want, what I think, what may cause me pain. I'm making decisions based on God. Now raise your hands in here if you're making decisions based on God, or are you in control? You know, one day, we all are going to stand before the Lord. And we're going to give an account for every word we spoke, for every action we took. And when I stand before the Lord, I want to be able to tell him, I tried to do what you said. I didn't try to do what I thought or I planned, but I tried to do what you said. Because we're going to be judged based on what he said. We got 66 books of the Bible. We're going to be judged out of every book written in this word. Not only that, we're going to be judged by the words God speaks to us individually. And the thing about it is, it's an open book test that none of the answers are hidden. They're only hidden to blind hearts. They're not hidden. You don't get it having a smart mind. You don't have, get it being the wisest person. You get it having a pure heart. So the question really becomes, do you want a pure heart that loves the Lord? 
Because you can want to be the smartest guy in the room, but the smartest guy in the room may not know the Lord. Do you want to have a pure heart that knows the Lord? Amen. Come on. The second thing, you, uh, which is mentioned right there as part of the first, is answer this question. Do you want to love the Lord? And how bad do you want to love him? Because that eliminates you. Your life success, or what you might deem success, is not based on you. Do you want to love him? Do you want to love somebody bigger than yourself? Do you want to serve somebody bigger than yourself? Do you want to know somebody who's greater than you? Or are you dependent on you? And so there's a, the greatest wrestling match in humanity is yourself. It's not others, it's not Satan, it's yourself. Because you must give up your will for his will. You must give up your ways for his ways. You must, and I say that problem is, I'm about to cuss. It's not a cuss word in the world, but it's a cuss word in the church. You must submit to him. And people have a problem with the word submission. They do. Because we're taught in our generation to submit to nobody. We're disrespectful to our parents. We're disrespectful to our boss. So it makes us extra hard for us to be submitted to God. Nobody's going to get into the pearly gates not being submitted to God. So if you don't like submitting to stuff, you better learn how to practice. Because when you get to heaven, all you're going to be is submitted. You're going to have to submit in heaven. Listen, I felt rebell rebellion raised up in here. You want to submit now or you're going to submit later? Everybody submits. At, at, at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess. I, I feel like i got to get the rebellion out of some people. He says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. He's going to make everybody bow. See, right now, it's free will. At, at the rapture and, and the judgment, the second coming of the Lord, it's no more free will. At the white throne of judgment, if you're a Satan, you're going to bow because you chose to. But if you're a devil, you're going to bow because you have to. But then he says, every tongue shall confess. You might not confess Jesus now, but if you don't confess him now, he's going to force you to confess him later. What I'm saying is... You have to submit to be saved, and some people don't want to hear that, but you're going to have to submit anyway. Satan is going to get on the knee, and he's going to confess that Jesus is Lord in front of everybody. Right next to Adolf Hitler. He's going to be on the knee, confessing that Jesus is Lord. And there's going to be a bunch of church folks who came to church and weren't really submitted in their heart to God. And they're going to be right next to them bowing. And they're going to have their place in the lake of fire right next to Adolf Hitler. You don't, but listen, church, you don't belong next to Adolf Hitler. You belong next to Jesus Christ. But you must be a worshiper now. You must be submitted now. You must serve him now. With all your heart, all your might, and all your strength, I, we can't judge it. As much as we want to, we can judge who's serving God and who's not serving God. That is between you and God in secret. Everybody serves God good on Sunday, but most people don't serve him good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And so, listen, we can't judge. The Bible says judge righteous judgment. The only thing I can judge by is the Spirit of God. Paul says, I have judged. He judged with discernment. We can judge with discernment all we want to, but me judging you, whether it's good or bad, does nothing for you. It also does nothing for me. I don't know if you realize that. I'm not the ultimate judge. You can repent. Even if you see I'm bad, you can repent. What I'm saying is, listen, church got a lot of ins and outs. The Bible got a lot of ins and outs. Your life has a lot of ins and outs. But let's get down to the simplicity of it. How bad do you want to live for God? We can go over every variable you want to. Do you pray? We can go over that. We can go over do you fast. We can go over do you study. We can go over do you worship God. We can go over do you, do you dress right? Do you live? We can go over this. We can nitpick everything. For what? Why are you going to nitpick? It's all answered in one question. How bad do you want to live for God? Because if you want to live for God real bad, all the rest will follow you ain't got to go issue by issue, line by... 
wearing yourself out. If you love God with all your heart and all your might, you're going to be a prayer warrior. You're going to be a worshiper. You're going to be a study of the word of God. See, when things get in conflict with living for God, it's not those things. It's your love for him. That's in question. Jesus said that the law rests on two commandments, loving God and loving others. He meant that. Does that mean that all it is is a warm, fuzzy feeling? No. More action comes from a warm, fuzzy feeling. It would be like me telling my wife and not coming home at night. I say, I love you. I'm going to sleep here at the church every night. <laughs> but I love you. <laughs> Amen? We complicate Christianity so often. And yes, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of stuff to love. But if we can't get the first thing right, why are we on step five? We can't get. Listen, step one, love God. Step one. Step one. We got to teach you about the baptism, about the infilling of the Holy Ghost, a lot of stuff. But if you don't have step one right, we are, we are building on the broken foundation. We putting dirt on top of something that is not properly built. And the problem is a lot of people are trying to get to the next level in God, and they never got their foundation right. The foundation is not the apostles' doctrine. The foundation is a love for God. And most people build the apostles' doctrine. They say, you yeah, ask how they baptize. They say, in Jesus' name, ask how they get holy. They say, we speak in tongues. They, they get everything. How you dress? I dress holy. I live a separate life. And they got all that right. You say, do you love God? Well, kind of. And everybody you ask to love God, they say they, they, everybody will say they love God. But let's, let's start checking that. How about let's do a temperature check on that. How bad do you love God? Amen. Are you going to the ends of the earth? From, are you hit over hills for him? Do you fantasize about him? Do you meditate upon his word day and night? When you pray, is it more than just labor? Is it actually something that you like to do? Is it actually love? See, see that's up there. We got to get over this religious facade and this day by day and this, you know, you know, day by day. We have our, I believe in routines for prayer. I feel God in here. I believe in doing the same thing uh, during the same time days just to have a consistency about it. But that could become mundane. I can pray an hour a day. I can do my little fast a week. I can read my Bible all day and not have any passion to it. Pharisees did it. They were holy as you can be. They fasted. They paid tithes, everything. No passion. No, no zeal. Dry. He, Jesus even said they were full of dry man's bones. These guys tithed. These guys knew the whole law. I mean, they studied the, they studied the Torah. They, they were studying the Old Testament all the time. But when Jesus said, he said they're full of dry man's bones. Come on, somebody. You can go to uh, seminary school all you want to. You can be dry. God don't like no dry religion. He don't like no quiet church. He don't like no church where there ain't no praise. Come on. You, you can't just, listen, Christianity, you can't just do it because you're supposed to. That is the worst form of Christianity. That is slavery. That is religion. That's a cult when you do it because you're supposed to. Jesus don't want you serving him because you're supposed to. He wants you to do it because you found a love for him. There is something to serving God because you're commanded to, but that's no fun. This Christianity thing is supposed to be a lot of fun. You're supposed to love this thing. You're supposed to get some excitement and joy out of this. If, if the Lord never makes you smile and thinking about him doesn't ever make you happy, you're doing the Christianity thing wrong. Your, your relationship with Jesus is not going the right way. You're supposed to, be ex, it's supposed to be exciting when somebody says Jesus. When your co-worker is just reading the Bible, you're supposed to get excited. You're supposed to get excited. They might not even be in the same doctrine as you or know what you know, but you say, hey, they're talking about Jesus. That's supposed to be exciting. Listen, stop with it. Listen, I'm, stop whatever you're doing if you're going through the motions of living for God and you lost your excitement. He told one church, you have lost your first love. Stop. He, listen, I'm, I'm, if you're, I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're in the middle of a big Bible study, you're trying to learn something deep. You need to go find your love. Listen, we're we on a search party tonight. We're playing hide and seek. Amen. We're playing, what is it called? We, we're taking a treasure hunt tonight. And wherever you are tonight, before you leave this house, you need to find your love for God. 
Come on, you need to find your love for God tonight. You, listen, I'm, I don't want to come to church upset. I'm upset before I got here. I'm still here sitting upset. Uh, I don't feel like my life's going right, and I come to church feeling that way. And, and we, uh, I've been there before. I've done that. Because all I want God to do is fix my problem. And I've been in places where all I want God to do is fix my problem. But how about just coming to see him? Just, just come to see him. Just, just come to get in his presence. Just come to talk with him. Paul was in prison. He said, I think myself happy. It's not about your situation. It's not about your circumstance. It's not about what happened to you. God's always good, 100% of the time. Amen? He's going to always be good. But you got to make it up in your mind that he's good. I'm telling you, when it don't feel right, you got to make it up in your mind he's good. Sometimes you got to shake yourself. You don't need anybody else to shake you. You got to shake yourself. I know, listen, there's bad days sometimes, but I know I love the Lord. See, listen, you, you can't live based on how you feel. You got to live based on what you know and the revelation you have from God. Some days you're going, it, things are not going to be going your way, but guess what? I know God is good. I, 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 I know it. You, you ain't got to feel that. I, I know it. When I'm worshiping God, I don't always feel anything, but I know he hears me. Come on, I, whoo, the best worship is the worship when you don't feel nothing. Matter of fact, the, the best worship is not even when you don't feel nothing. It's when you feel the complete opposite. I'm telling you, I saw some of the most anointed praise I ever see is seeing somebody going through utter hell and they're clapping their hands with tears in their eyes, or lifting their hands. And you listen, it's, it's easy to do like this. Anybody has muscle enough to lift your hand. But see, that, see, you know, if you get a 20 pound dumbbell and lift your hands, it's kind of heavy. But there's something heavier than that sorrow. When you got sorrow on you and you go to lift your, it's hard to lift your hands in the presence of God when there's a heaviness upon you. But it's the most anointed you're going to ever be when you lift your hands. When sorrow is on you, and pain is on you, and depression is trying to hit you, and all hell's breaking loose, when that is the most anointed you're ever going to be when you come in the house to worship him. Listen, oh, Shah, we're going to do something this year, amen, and going into 2022. This is my thing. I'm, I, I'm starting to worship God for stuff that hasn't happened yet, before it ever happened. I'm... Uh, I'm not naming it and claiming it. I'm just worshiping God. Amen. I believe he's all powerful. I believe he's all knowing. I believe he has earth in his hand. The whole universe fits inside of him. So I'm going to, I tried, I started last night. I started thanking God. I said, God, I thank you for a new church building, God. I, I just go ahead and thank you for it, God. God, I thank you for every soul that's going to get saved. Can he do it? Then why not? Let's just go ahead and thank him for it now. What are we waiting for? Thank you, Jesus. You got to, if you're in a pit, you need to begin to climb yourself out. I said, God, I thank you for the car we got outside. I need an oil change, but I thank you that it's still running, Lord. Lord, I thank you for my children. I ain't getting much sleep, God, but I thank you that they're here. I thank you that I'm married. I thank you that I have a house. I'm thankful that the house has AC in the house. I'm thankful that I ate something today. You got something to be thankful about. I'm thankful that both my legs still work because I got some friends that lost theirs in war. I'm thankful I still got hands, God. Come on, you got to be thankful about something. God has given you something to be thankful about. We're all clothed tonight. We all got on some type of clothing. Let's be thankful for that. You, when you're thankful for the small things, God will bless you with the big things. Be thankful for everything. Depression can't rest upon thankfulness. Come on, so depression cannot rest upon thankfulness. Because every time, see, depression tries to remind you of what you don't have. Thankfulness reminds you of everything God has done. Come on, somebody. See, depression says you aren't get a building yet. 
But thankfulness says we were in a hotel. Thankfulness said we had church on base. Thankfulness said we were in a Methodist building. We didn't have a church for 35 years. But see, thankfulness, thankfulness does two things. It thanks God for the past, and it propels you to your future. So I'm thankful for this building that we're in right now. And I'm thankful for the next one, too. But I choose to be thankful. Come on, you, you, listen, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, amen, by the spirit of the Lord, amen. So I'm going to worship him because I can't fix it no way. Only he can fix it. Come on, God can fix it. I know he can fix it. I don't got nothing to lose. I already can't fix it. So I'm just going to worship the one that can. What am I losing by clapping my hands and singing this? I'm not losing nothing. When you understand that God can't fail, you'll never take no for an answer. Anybody with me? When people came up to Jesus, Jesus told some folks no. Some folks he didn't answer. But they wouldn't leave, they wouldn't leave him alone. You understand? Jesus' own mother, he t- Jesus told his own mother in the flesh, he says, it's not time yet. She didn't hear that. She, she said, okay. She didn't even answer him back. She told the servants, hey, whatever he says, do, do it. <laughs> I, I, listen, I'm, I'm feeling a little ignorant tonight. And it's not really ignorant. This is what God, God wants to test some people sometime. God don't answer me, that's okay. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm coming back. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll be back tomorrow. Let, 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 Let God let me fail if he wants to. I know how to crawl. I'd get back up. I'll be back at an altar somewhere. I'll be asking the same questions for what I need because God can do it. Let it fail if you want to, God. I'll be back tomorrow. Come on, somebody. Some people around here never crawled on their knees before. You're too proud to beg. I'm going to dignify myself for a moment. You never got in the presence of God before. You're too dignified to do something like this. You're too dignified to crawl on your hands and knees. You don't want anybody to see your imperfection. You don't want anybody to see your pain. You don't want anybody. Come on. We're too dignified in church sometimes. We got on suits and dresses and nice clothes. We don't want, we don't want to feel shame. We don't want to feel guilt. We, want to feel pain. We, want, we don't want to tell nobody you've been disappointed in God before. I have. You know what I did? I went back to another altar. What I do, I cried at that altar too. I cried at altars when I didn't know what was going on. What you crying for? I don't know. I'm just trying to get myself together. And, and I know the same guy who I think messed up is the same guy I think that could fix it. So I'm going to him. He's like a bad mechanic sometimes. He broke the car, now he got to fix it. Now, my Bible says that we're on the potter's wheel. And we're the clay and he's the potter. He done broke a part off me, he need to put it back. Some, you got to learn how to talk to God and get real. The Paul went to him three times, said, I have a thorn in my flesh. Can you remove it? He said, no, my grace is sufficient for thee. Paul said, oh, well, I'm keep on serving you with the thorn. You got to understand how to, how to serve God. Thorn, no thorn. Like Jacob, limp, no limp. You make me limp, I'm still going to follow you limping. Like, what, we're going to have a thorn, we're going to have a limp. What we having, Jesus? I don't care what you give me, I'm coming. Do I got to come with a limp? Do I got to come with a thorn? You're going to break my heart or you're going to fix it. I, I'm like Paul. I'm in prison. I'm a free man. He said, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Paul, you're not free. You're in handcuffs. He said, I'm in handcuffs, but I'm preaching gospel. Amen. I wake up, Jesus, what is it going to be today? And we, 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 okay. Still, come on. <laughs> come on. You, listen, stop, stop letting your circumstance dictate who you are. Stop letting them dictate who you are. Let, 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 let me tell you something about your circumstance. Your circumstance is not your name. What's your name? Depressed? What's your name? Sad? What's your name? It just not going right. That's not your name. Your name is whatever your mama and daddy named you. 
by the inspiration of God. Listen, y'all think kids with funny names, their parents that get it from God, you better shut your mouth. God don't make no mistakes. God, listen. That funny name you think they got, that's what God called them to. Come on, you better be careful what you say about people. Like somebody named their kids a rubber bell. And that was a word from God, amen? The reason I say that is because don't identify yourself with your problem. This is Simon the leper. I Listen, my name was James who used to get drunk. But I ain't a drunk no more. I'm James who used to smoke, but I ain't drank no more. Don't put smoker on my name. Don't put drinker on my name. I don't identify that no more. You understand what I'm talking about? Stop identifying with your past. Her name was Mary Magdalene. They call her Mary who used to be the prostitute. You better get the prostitute off her name. Her name is Mary Magdalene. I'm talking to some people tonight who you've been labeling yourself by your past too long. You such and such who was in a bad relationship. But when you get married, that relationship never going to exist again. So st quit, quit tiling yourself. Something the guy's not calling you. Only people remember what you used to be. God remember what he made you. The Bible says you become a new creature in Christ. When a new creature, you got a new identity. Don't, and don't and listen. Something a wise man once said, you got to be careful what you answer to. Come on. Somebody call you stupid, I ain't answering. My own mama could call me stupid, I wouldn't answer. Listen, I'm not going to disrespect her, I'm just not answering. I ain't going to say like, if it was somebody else, I would say who you think you're talking to. I don't know who stupid is. My name is James. You, be careful what you answer to. Because what you answer to is what you identify yourself as. Everybody understand what I'm saying? We got to get, get over all these hurdles. Why can't you live for God? I would, but this person not living for God with me. Don't, live, don't wait for them. Live for God for yourself. Listen, I, uh, listen this Christianity thing, listen, it's hard. Who here can swim? I can't, so don't, 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 if you drown it, don't call this guy. But if you can swim, raise your hand, because I can't. I sure can't swim. Amen? I, I said, who can save me? Okay. <laughs> but, you know, if, if swimming is a actually very strenuous exercise, I can tread water a little. I'm not going to drown, but, but living for God is not supposed to be like swimming. It's supposed to be like riding a boat. Because when you ride the boat, the water carries you. When you swim, you have to carry yourself through the water. The problem we have is, how many people in here are thinkers? We all think. We got a brain. I'm going to tell you where 80% of your problems come from. Everybody put a finger right here. That's 80%, not by power, not by night. Nor by power. Well, yes. But here. Right here. The right point. Because all we do is think. And the Lord says, follow my spirit. And we say, I'm going to think about it. And the Lord says, many are led of the spirit. They are the sons of God. And we said, we're going to think about it. The Bible says, we know not what to pray as we ought. But the spirit itself make it intercession for us. So, Literally, Paul said, you don't even know what you're supposed to be praying. What do we do? Think about what we're supposed to be praying. The Bible said we don't know. It's Bible. The Bible says we're supposed to be led in the Spirit. Listen, quit thinking, start praying. And once you're praying, start listening. And when God starts instructing, you start obeying. So I want to help us real quick because some of us do see God. I want to talk about spiritual wonderland. No, spiritual wonderland does not exist. Yeah, it's like Alice in Wonderland. We had a uh, we had a game called Candyland, you know, a little board game. You know, but grown people live in fairy tales. They do. Everybody, everybody's attention like, what is this preacher talking about? There's some grown people who treat their Christianity like it's fairy tales, make believe. You might as well call it Shrek or something. It's all make-believe. They live in fairy town land. 
There's a belief that some people have this type of faith. I got some extreme, I believe in radical faith, but the type of faith some people have is God does everything, I do nothing. God is going to bless me, and I'm going to go sleep on the couch. Oh, some people believe that. They say, God said he's going to bless me. So what you do? I'm waiting on God to bless me. I was like, that's good. I said, did you get a new job yet? And they say, I'm waiting for God to bless me. I'm like, um, it don't work like that. It, 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 don't, it don't work like that. Let's read James. James 2.17 says, everybody get that. I'll give you a second. We're in the book of James. Not this James, the, the brother of Jesus James, the apostle James. We're in the book of James. It's going to get deep here. Let's hurry along. James chapter 2. We want to get out of fairyland tonight. James 2 in verse number 17, when you have it, say amen. amen. It says, even so faith, if it have not works, is dead being alone. It says, yea, a man say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The devils uh, also believe and tremble. Okay. He says, faith, if it have not works, is dead. I, li I really like verse number 19. It really spoke to me today as I was studying. You know, it says, if, that, if you believe there's one God, you're doing well. Amen. He said, the devil also believe and tremble. What he's saying is, you just coming to an apostolic church is not enough. He said, the devils know there's one God too. You know there's one God, great. He said, but he says, faith without works is dead. Amen? What does that mean? You can believe it all you want to. You better do something about it. Oh, it's quiet in here, amen? Let, let's examine some more of this chapter because it gets, it gets uh, verse number 21. It says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how by works a man is justified, not by faith only. Faith only is the idea of you just have faith and God does. The God you serve don't just do all the time. He can, but most of the times he tells you what to do. Amen? Things aren't always just going to happen because you believe them. You have to work towards what God's calling you. You have to hear his voice. You have to be led of the spirit. God's always talking. You got to go. This idea, of, listen, I believe in having just faith. I want God to just bust out and do some things I'm praying for without me having to do anything. I, be I believe he could do that. I want him to do that. If I had to go sit on my couch and say, God's about to, we about to have revival. And I sit there every day. Well, I said, what you doing? God said, we have revival. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> we need to be practical, believe in the, but believe in the supernatural. The guy can do, God can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, wherever he wants. But... We can't create problems for ourselves expecting God to save us. The Bible also says, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now let me go ahead and tell this story. I wasn't going to tell it, but the Lord spoke to me. There was, a, there was a man. He was in the church somewhere around here. And there was a minister, a young minister at the church. And there was a lady he was trying to help out who couldn't pay her rent. So instead of paying his rent, he paid her rent expecting God to pay his rent. He did this for a few months, and he says, well, if I take care of her, God will take care of me. I believe in giving. I love to give. I believe you should give, but you should give what you're able to give. <laughs> you should give what you're able to give. And so he showed up at the pastor's house, and the pastor said, what are you doing here? And he explained to him what I just explained to you. And the pastor says, you know, don't, don't do that. He ended up living in the pastor's basement. God bless that pastor for letting him stay there. I've been like, brother, you got a hotel tonight. You got to figure something out in the morning. 
I have too many kids. We ain't got no room. But my point is, he he wasn't being practical. He had much. See, God looking at him like he said, "God bless me money." God said, "I gave you money to pay your bills." What happened to your money? He get he spent it all to try and help somebody else, and that's a good deed. I mean, he did a great deed, but it sure did put him on the streets. Amen. Common sense, folks. Can, 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 let's clap our hands for common sense. I felt that. I felt that. I believe in the supernatural, but I also believe in common sense. Maybe because I got spankings growing up, but I had some common sense. A lot of y'all need to get some common sense. Before you get spiritual, you need some common sense. Listen, if y'all not married, don't spend your money on them. Hot. Barely paying your bills, can't save nothing. Just spending all your money. Lord. Come on. My kid, I hit you upside the head. I can't hit you, not mine. But God's word, this Bible, is a map out of your situation. You need to line up your whole life with this word. If you find something that you're violating... In this word, you got to fix your life. You can't fix the word. You got to fix your life. I want to show you something about this whole miracle provision thing. God did send a raven to feed Elijah. But Elijah was working for the Lord. And the Lord told him where to go, which brook to go to. There was a widow woman who God sustained as she was feeding Elijah. But guess what? She cooked every day. Come on. There's a miracle and there's a work. There's a miracle, and there's a work. The mill and the oil kept on replenishing, but she, every time she looked at the mill, she didn't just look at it. She had to bake a cake. Some of us just want the mill to replenish and look at it and just go eat it. She had to work. Listen, faith without works is dead. Prophet Johnson said it so eloquently last week. It's the working of miracles. You got to do something. Manna can fall out the sky all it want to. Say, God, feed me. Manna hit the ground. God, feed me. It's on the ground. Pick it up and eat it. You, you're going to still have to go pick it up and gather it and go in the house and eat it. Right? Didn't God deliver? Wasn't it supernatural how God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now, before the deaf angel came, he made them all work. He said, you go get a lamb. Y'all slay that lamb. You put the blood on the doorpost. He said, you cook the lamb, and y'all got to eat the whole lamb before morning. And whatever you don't eat, you got to burn it. Now, what the angel said, God's coming to save me. <laughs> and you go to one house, they say, hey, you ain't cooking your lamb? No, the Lord is going to give us great deliverance. They said, hey, brother, look, I know God's about to deliver us, but you better get some blood up on your post. You better get baptized in Jesus' name. You better be filled with the Holy Ghost. You better quit playing. God's going to save us, but you better put the blood on the post. They said, no, I'm saved by faith and not by works. Your faith going to get you dead that night. <laughs> but you see, you see what I'm saying? God is supernaturally giving instructions that cause you to work. It says these works are foreordained that you may walk in them. We're not saved by works. We're saved by faith. But the evidence of your faith is a work. When you believe in God, he's going to cause you to do something. That's why Paul said, did Abraham have faith before after circumcision? Before circumcision. But let him not get circumcised. When God showed up, when Moses was on his way back to Egypt, God withstood him because he was not circumcised. And he, oh, that's good. And he made him get circumcised, lest the Lord would have killed him in the way. He had faith, but God said, now you got to get circumcised. Y'all don't hear me. You got faith, but now you got to obey God. There's something that God wants you to do with your faith. Anybody understand this? Listen, I, I, I wish it was that easy. I just believe. I go in my closet and pray. I wake up. There's a bunch of money in the account. There's... We got like five church buildings, you know, and like, if it was just on mental knowledge of belief, I mean, this thing would be easy. 
But your mental knowledge of belief leads to instructions. That obedience is better than sacrifice. Yep. Uh, see, your faith, listen, hear me. Your faith leads to obedience. God's going to make you do something. I'm preaching. I'm getting you up out of a, somebody's getting up out of a hole tonight. You believe God, but now you got to do something about it. Anybody with me tonight? Yeah. You, 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 got, you got some things. The Spirit of God guides and leads. He don't make no mistakes if it's God. He's going to guide you and lead you, but you must be willing to be uh, guided and led. The downfall of this hour is self-will and what I like to call self-revelation. Amen? You always want to know about yourself. You got to understand your feelings are not the voice of God. Your feelings are not the voice of God. You can't go based on what you feel. You got to live based on what you know. Mm, come on, somebody. Because feelings always change, but the word of God is always true. You could be angry one second, sad one second. On fire for God, feeling kind of cold, but God's always the same. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Amen? When you always talk about how you feel, chances are you're going to make some mistakes. And the worst thing you can be is led of your feelings. Anybody with me? Because your feelings are always uncertain. They're never stable. I want, I want to tell somebody something. I love feeling the presence of God. Woo, I love feeling it. My goodness, ain't nothing like it. I, lo I like feeling the touch of the anointing. But a touch... Is not a direction. Hear me. A touch from God. I can feel great from God. You know what? See, the problem we have in church is we feel a touch and we give a word. You, you didn't hear me. We feel a touch, and it was God, but then we give ourselves the word. Is it? Come here, Carlos. Come here. Come, 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 come up here with me. Come here. Come here. Look, look that way. I'm going to pat him on the back. What do you think my Pat said? Yeah. <laughs> he said, oh, here, tell him. I'm doing a good job. <laughs> okay. So he interpreted <laughs> that my, my Pat on his back meant that he was doing a good job. <laughs> it could have been, a, I want you to do better. <laughs> it could have been, keep your head up. Oh, it could have been a lot of things. But the thing is, there's, it's not, he's not certain what I'm saying. Because I haven't said nothing. That's how people are getting tripped up with God. Because they felt him, and they thought it meant something. And it does mean something, but you don't know what it means. Unless he speaks, you don't know what he's saying. Anybody hear what I'm talking about? So when I feel him, I, I'm, I'm encouraged. I feel God. He must be with me. But I don't know what he's saying. You hear me? Woo. And when I do hear him, here's what I do. Woo, I feel God. I, I think about scripture and stories in the Bible. Because God tells me something. I look for something in the Bible that kind of resembles what he's saying to me. Amen? Another thing I do is I want to hear from people who I know hear from God. Go, turn with me quickly to John 8. And I'm I want to get out of here. So turn to John 8. I want to show you something. I'm going to teach you something. I'm, I'm getting all the devils out of your life. And, and I'm not saying you have a devil. The devil is just full of trickery. He's always trying to beat people down. He's always trying to discourage people. He's always trying to steal somebody's joy because he comes to do nothing but steal, kill, and destroy. But we're going to stop on his kingdom tonight. We're going to encourage you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So John 8.13 says... It says, the Pharisees therefore said unto him, thou, thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. I'm in verse number 13. They're using a principle of the law, which you need to actually use this principle. Just not like a Pharisee. Verse number 14 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. He said, check this out. Jesus is telling you something. 
is oneness, but he's saying, for I'm not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. So Jesus is saying, I'm judging based on myself and the Father. He's saying, I'm, in, I'm, I'm the Son, I'm in flesh, but he says, in me dwells the Father, he doeth the work. So he said, there's two. There's the Spirit, that's the Father, there's the Son, which is him. He says, he says I am the Father that sent me. He says, it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Now check this out. He's, he's using something that he established in the law. He established it, but he's trying to tell us something. Because we have a phrase we like to say, by two or three, let every word be established. It's, it's, it's a very true concept. You need two or three witnesses in the law to be a witness. You can't witness against one man by yourself. It has to be two or three to make it true. And what I'm saying is, if you're hearing from God, it needs to be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Hear me. Now, if you want to walk face forward into a steel wall and you just learn how to hear the voice of God, go at it by yourself. But even Jesus sent out his disciples two by two. Why did he send them out two by two? Because if, if two were there and just one was preaching, the other one's a witness. And even though they're telling somebody one thing, it's confirmed because there's two witnesses. You, 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 somebody didn't get it. That's why he's sending them out. He is fulfilling the law. He said, I got to send them out two by two. Anybody with me today? Because with two, it's established. The word that they're speaking is established. He even said, if two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Because you need two to establish a, a witness. I flew over some people's here. Some people got it. Some people... It's it struggling behind, amen? And you're a witness. Everybody in here, just, just one preacher during a service, but you are a witness. Because if it's just me, say we got a, me and there's two other people. I'm preaching, one person's converted, one person's not. The person that's converted is a witness to the person who's not. Because they're agreeing with the preacher. So the word is established. Every church service, you don't even know what's going on. The word's being established every time you say Amen. Woo, that's a lot. Y'all learn something? Amen. Amen. But so in your personal life, you need another witness to help guide you. Somebody say amen. amen. We need each other. We don't need no one man wrecking crews around here. If you are, God bless you. But you don't need to be a one man wrecking crew. You need to get some brothers and sisters in Christ that can help you and, and uphold you in Jesus' name. So this says, not by might, no more power. That represents you, your ability, your might, your strength, your power, your resources. But by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? We need to learn how to exalt God in our lives. Amen? We're not worshiping God simply to get a blessing. We're worshiping God to survive. I want a blessing, but you got to understand, it's part of your spiritual survival. You might not think so, but it really is. Amen? Try not worshiping God and see how long you live for him. Amen? You, you can't simply try to hear from God and try to be blessed. You need to worship God for who he is. That gives God lordship in your life. Mm. What you worship is lord over your life. Come on, my goodness. We got to learn. Some people got to learn how to worship. Everybody has a Lord. Some of y'all been serving Lord Drake for a long time. Y'all been in the six for a long time. Yeah, that's right. You serve the six guy, which is six, six, six. But you worship Drake. You worship all these rappers because you sang their songs. Singing is a form of worship, and it's the most intimate form. Anybody ever sing the song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord? Doesn't you feel like you're like just sitting there worshiping God, just opening your heart, just basking in his presence? W when you sing rap songs, you do the same thing. Every music you play is a form of worship. Music is, wasn't created to do anything but worship. Let me stop messing with stuff. All right. I'm just, I'm just meddling this stuff. Amen? Some people, you got to pray about that. Pray about it. Don't hit the preacher upside the head. Pray about it. Amen? When, when you worship a holy God, it makes you holy. 
I'm not talking about praise. I'm talking about worship, surrender. When you get in his presence, it changes you. Because worship is deeper than praise. Anybody come to church and clap with us. But when God gets still, you got to raise your hands and surrender and close your eyes. Some, the people who are in sin be like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Because this makes you submit. This makes the presence of God sweep over you and change you, and you start feeling conviction. And like, I need to change this about my life. And, and Lord, yes, it was. And, and then, like you, when you're in that mode of defenselessness, and you done done something, you're like, God. That's why some people you can never get them to raise their hands in the church service. They're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, so they don't want to feel. When they feel that, it's like they know what it is. It's conviction. The goodness of God draws you to repentance. My goodness, Amen. That's why some people don't want to feel that. Amen. If you're going to accomplish the will of God in your life, you're going to have to learn how to worship. I'm going to say something that might sound weird, but we can't establish a relationship with God through prayer only. Well, I'm about to help you. I'm about to help you. I like praying. Like Paul said, he said he spoke in tongues more than them all. I believe in praying all the time, amen, with understanding and in the spirit. But the more you worship God, the bigger he is to you. God's already omnipresent. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful, all-knowing, and he's everywhere. And you know that, but when you worship him, it actually illuminates that to your mind, and to your heart, and to your soul, and to your spirit. Literally, God is the most powerful being there is. Right. Everybody knows that, but to, you got to open your spirit to it. And the only way to open your spirit to it is undulterated, intimate worship. That's why people can read the Bibles for years and never establish a relationship with God. They're reading the same book you're reading, but it's not intimate. Come on. It's not in, they're reading, They read the Bible every year. Some people read the Bible through every year. They done read the Bible 30 times and still have never felt God. Because if you're going to fit them, you're going to have to worship. You're going to have to worship. You're not going to be dignified in heaven. You, you, everybody's going to throw their crown at his feet. You better start getting ignorant in worship here on earth. You better hear me, somebody. There, there ain't going to be no quiet praise in, in, in heaven. There's only going to be a moment of silence. Listen, the angels do such a great job. The elders do such a great job. They just cry holy. Come on. They cry holy. Why not practice? Listen, if, if your mouth is closed here on earth, you're going to have a hard time in heaven. He makes us speak in tongues. He made us speak. Open your mouth. Woo! You want to get to heaven, everybody's going to be saying, holy, and be like, I don't want to do that today. Jesus will come from the throne and stand right next to you. What you say? You're going to say, you are Lord. You are Lord. <laughs> Come on. If you don't like worship now, you're, gonna, you're not going to like the throne room. You can't go stand on the outskirts of heaven and say, God, that's, they're doing too much in there by the throne. They're too loud by the throne. There's too much worship and praise going on by the throne. Come on, somebody. So you better practice now. You better go home, look, just go home, just turn some music, to close your bathroom door and start practicing. I'm serious. If you, if you feel awkward to clap to God, and you feel awkward to lift your hands, and you feel awkward to say hallelujah, when you go home tonight, you need to go in your bathroom, you need to lock the door. You ain't got to look in the mirror. I know you feel funny. Just raise your hand and say, I oh, thank you. Come on, you, you better get out of your rut. The devil's going to whoop your tail if you don't learn how to worship. Come on, somebody. Come on, that, that's, the, that's how you surrender. That's how you submit. Come on. If, if, if you don't know how to do it, just try it. Just close your eyes. We can't see you. Nobody cares. Come on. Come on, just try it. Begin to worship him. Come on, you got to get out of it. Come on, don't, don't allow the devil to tear you down. Don't allow something to hold you back. Come on, the altar is open. Come on, come on, somebody. Come on, come on, let's, let's continue to worship him. 
He's a good God. Hallelujah. He's a great God. He's mighty. We got to practice worship here. In heaven, we're going to do this all the time. Woo, hallelujah. God's going to break some chains off your family. This is how we submit to God. This is how we submit to his lordship. Come on, somebody. Come on, this is, this, is, this is how you get the move of God in your life. Come on, everybody, front to back, just close your eyes and begin to worship. Come on, no matter what you're going through, worship can bring you out of a pit. Worship can get you connected to God. Worship can destroy the strongholds. Because it's not going to be by your power or your might. It's going to be by the spirit of God. So let, let's practice worshiping him now on earth. Let's exalt his name together. We love you, oh Jesus. Come on, the Lord loves this church. The Lord's going to lift up this church. God's going to take us to new places, but we got to be worshipers. We're going to have to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt us in due season. We're going to have to worship him no matter how we feel. Come on, we're going to have to worship the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings no matter how we feel. We're going to have to exalt his name. Hallelujah. We're going to have to submit ourselves to him in worship. Come on. He says, I come that you may have life and life more abundantly. God has an abundant life for us, but it's found in a place of worship. It's going to be by his spirit, so we can't do it by ourselves. It's not going to be in our flesh. It's not going to be in our own strength. It's going to be in him. I don't understand him all the time, but I know God's good. Everything hasn't always went my way, but I know God is perfect. I know God is strong. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you in this place. Come on, some of you who've been to a bad situation, God's about to turn it all around. But you just got to worship. Everything that the enemy meant for your evil, God's going to turn it around for your good. For we serve an all-powerful God, an all-knowing God. Things may have not went the way you always thought they should. But God's going to help you. God's going to raise you up. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, God's going to help you. He's going to raise you up. We're just, uh, Lord Jesus, we're submitting to you in worship. Church, let's just submit to God in worship. We're submitting to you, God. Not our ways, God, but your ways. Not our will, God, but your will. Not, your, not our plan, God, but your plan. Lord, we submit to your lordship. Lord, we submit to your way. God's about to, I'm telling you, God's going to raise this church up. I'm telling you, if you went through a bad time, get ready, because you're about to have the best time of your life telling you, if you went through a hardship, God's about to give you the best season of your life. Listen, it may look impossible. It may look like there's no way God's going to do anything. But I'm telling you, you're about to have the best time of your life. Come on, somebody. Gotta, if you've been through a hard time, you ought to be worshiping God right now. Listen, I'm challenging you. If you've been through hell, if you've been going through hell, if you've been going through a storm, and a storm's been overtaking your mind and your body and your relationships, I challenge you to just worship God right now. Even if he's the one that lets you down, I challenge you to worship God right now. Come on, I'm telling you, you're about to have the best time of your life. For every pain and sorrow, God's about to reward you. God's going to reward you for every scar, every lump and every bruise. Come on, every broken heart, every sleepless night. If you can just worship, come on, let it out, let it out. Don't hold back. Come on, God's going to reward you for everything you've been going through. Come on, every nightmare, every dream that's been unrealized, we're going to worship him. He's going to change it. Come on. Come on, come on, God's healing right now. Come on, no matter how bad it is. Come on, even if God's the one who failed you, worship him. Come on, sometimes he didn't come when we wanted him to. Sometimes God allowed things to happen, but I'm going to worship him anyway. Lord, we worship you. 
Come on, some chains are being brought. I challenge. I'm sitting in a challenge. Worship God no matter how you feel right now. Oh, come on, worship God no matter how you feel right now. Hey, come on. Come on, Carlos. He's breaking some chains for you, brother. He's breaking some chains off you. Right, they're broken, brother. Lift your hands. They're broken, brother. Rejoice. They're broken. Come on. Come on. Allow them to be broke. I challenge you, the more hell you in, the louder you should worship. The worst situation you've been through, the louder you should worship. You're going to get miracles. You're going to get miracles. Come on, you're going to get a miracle that you never thought was possible. Come on. You want to get a miracle you never thought was possible in Jesus' name. Come on, the, the harder your pain is, worship that. The deeper the scar is, worship like that. Come on, the worse the nightmare, the greater the praise. I'm telling you, we're going to see miracles after tonight. Come on, somebody. Put all that pain on the altar. Just put all the pain on the altar. Put all your shame on the altar. Put every scar on the altar tonight. Oh. God's going to do miracles for some of us tonight. I'm telling you, by Sunday, some of y'all are going to be having a miracle. I'm telling you, the harder the pain is, the greater your worship needs to be. The greater the letdown, the harder your clapping got to be. You just got to survive sometimes through hard seasons. Listen, oh, I feel God. God, listen. Hold on one second. I want you to let out a cry in a second. God doesn't always do what we want, when we want, how we want. But God must always recompense and reward for everything we go through. And I'm looking at a lot of people who went through a lot of hell, who fought a lot of devils, who had a lot of problems. What I'm telling you is it may not happen the way you thought it should have, but it doesn't mean God can't still bless you. Listen, every pain, I don't want anybody hiding pain. I, we're not talking about what the pain is. We're not talking about what your devil is or your struggle is. But we're about to lay it all on the altar right now in Jesus' name. If you're struggling, if you've been through something, if you've been disappointed, God's about to heal somebody in here. Whatever you've been through, let's get it out of your spirit tonight. We're just going to close our eyes, and we're going to lift a This is a grunt tonight. We're on intercession mode. You can let out an ugly grunt, an ugly, whatever, however you got to let it out. Some people have been through things they can't tell nobody about. And they can't talk to anybody about it because everybody just wouldn't understand. But we're going to pray healing upon you tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, let's just let out that cry right now. Father God, right now in Jesus' name, I'm praying that healing God, that healing God would touch this place. Come on, allow the Lord to heal you tonight. No matter what that pain was, let that pain out. Every pain and every struggle. The Lord's in this place right now. He's moving back and forth. The Lord's going to touch you right now in Jesus' name. The Lord's going to touch you in Jesus' name. The weight's been too heavy for you to carry by yourself. But the Lord's about to carry it. You're about to be yoked up with the Lord. He's going to carry that weight. My God. The Lord's touching people right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
All right, all right. We're gonna do we do one more thing. We're gonna get we're gonna giving God our pain. We're giving Him our sorrow. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna act in faith. I'm telling you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a new building. I'm looking for a greater revival, a greater harvest. Let's all stand on our feet. We're gonna do something together. For some people, this this exercise might be very hard, but. It's time that we, listen, we're not going to let a setback hold us back. Whoo, sha mama. I'm looking for the God to help me take care of my family. I got three kids and a wife. We need God to do a lot of things. But when I say we're going to close our eyes, everybody's going to do it at the same time. We're going to lift our hands to God, and we're all going to ask God for what we want and what we need. And don't be afraid to ask God again, even if it hurts you. If he's God, we're going to make him God. If he's God, I'm going to take my chance with him. Ask God what you will, no matter how much it's, it's going to hurt. Amen? God has let me down sometimes, but I'm going to ask him again tonight. Amen? I'm telling you, I'm asking God. I, if God don't help me, I can't take care of my family. I'm going to be honest with you. He's been helping me, but Lord, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but I'm going to ask God. And all I'm going to say is Jesus, and you ask Jesus whatever you want. On the count of three, everybody, eyes closed, hands lifted. Be radical. Don't be fearful. He knows. One, two, three. Jesus! Ask him for what you want, specifically. Ask him for what you want. Come on. Uh, come on, ask him for what you want, specifically. Come on, everybody, ask him, ask him. The deepest desires of your heart, ask him. Yes, yeah, right. Ask him right now. Come on, a few more moments. Ask him everything. Don't be afraid. Now, God, I have a bunch of saints who prayed to you and made petitions. God, we believe you're all powerful, all knowing. God, I want to put you on the spot. You're God. Give us these miracles because of who you are, because of your greatness. God, you said if we ask anything in your name, you'll do it. God, I want to put you on the spot tonight. Do these miracles in Jesus' name. Hama, hama, mama. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just pray for a few more moments. I feel God in here. Maybe God will speak to us. Let's just pray for a few more moments. Come on, let's pray. Come on, I, I just believe God's going to do it. I believe the Lord's going to do it for us tonight. In Jesus' name. I, I feel this. Everybody just lift your hands high. Everybody lift your hands high. The Lord's in this place. Come on, we're going to wait on the Lord. Everybody lift your hands high. Come on, I feel God in this place. Come on, let's be sensitive to God. God's in here really strong. Come on, if you got it, something, let it out. Maya haina maha no roshia maha. Ye maha ya no roshia maha ya no roshia maha ya maha. Oshia maha ya maha ya no roshia ya ba. Ya maha ya no ro ya mi ya ha ya fi ya no ro roshia maha ya la. Ya maha ya no roshia maha ya la ya shia maha ya no roshia maha ya la maha ya no roshia. saith the Lord, I've heard your prayers, I've heard your petitions, I've heard your requests. You don't think I'm going to answer it. You think you're in a season, you think you're in a wait. You question me in prayer. You question me while I'm in the throne. But I want to hear you. I want to hear you say it again to me. I heard you. You don't think I've heard your tears. You don't think I've heard your fast. You don't think I've heard you, your prayers. You think I'm going to leave you begging for bread. 
like, like a homeless person waiting, like a lame man waiting to be healed. You think I'm going to leave you like that? I've heard your prayers. I heard your weep. I haven't counted. Every teardrop is counted. I'm telling you right now, your prayers will be answered soon. But just wait. Have faith. Uh. Stop looking with your bare eyes and have faith. Uh. That's right. Let's just ask again in faith. We're just going to ask again in faith in Jesus' name. Grab hands with somebody near you right now, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Grab hands to the person next to you. I want you to speak life into them right now. Turn to them and just speak life into them. I'm going to speak life right now, in Jesus' name. Speak life in him. Lay hands on the person next to you and speak life. Come on. Come on, just bless them. Speak life into them. Speak life into them right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, just encourage the people next to you just for a few more moments. If you have something from God, give it to them. Just encourage them. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. What a sweet visitation of the Lord tonight. 
We're going to continue to worship him in all we got. And I look to hear miracle reports from people. Again, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Let's clap our hands unto God for his goodness. And we're going to dismiss for tonight in Jesus' name.